Over the past 85 years, the Wrights Bowl has evolved into more than just a high school football stadium. It has become a symbol of the west side of Evansville. Following the completion of F.J. Wrights High School in 1918, plans for a retaining wall had been made for the northeast side of the campus. From the beginning of the Wrights football team in 1919, they always played in the spot that we now know as the bowl. Uh, when I interviewed Albert Fisher several years ago, who was on that first team, uh, he described the bowl as that flat spot behind the school and he, he said there weren't seats there then people just sit up on the, on the hill on, on pieces of canvas or on, on uh, blankets. Members of the school board campaigned for a new stadium to be built in addition to the retaining wall already planned. This new, one-of-a-kind stadium was designed by architects Arthur Capella and Charles Troutman of Evansville. Construction began in 1921 under the direction of contractors W.H. Grammer and Manson Reichert. By August 18, 1921, the excavation was three-fourths done and 100 feet of the retaining wall was complete. The stadium was capable of holding 3,600 people by 1921. After the season, construction continued in order to finish the rest of the 672-foot wall and stadium. Before the start of the 1922 season, the entire stadium had been completed and contractor W.H. Grammer presented the school with a drinking fountain on May 22, 1922. While the original contract had been estimated that the stadium would cost just under $22,000, the final total was considerably larger, totaling $52,964. Many renovations were made to the bowl following its construction. In 1931, new lights were added to the stadium. Until that point, each game had been played in the afternoon, mostly on Saturdays. The West Side Nut Club funded updates to these lights in 1951. In 1936, Dr. George Strayer made recommendations for additions to the school, including a field house for boys' physical education. The field house that's there today um, was completed in 1987. Um, but the field house that was there before, the field house that I remember uh, in when I was in peewee wrestling and um, as a kid was sort of a strange collection of uh, buildings. Uh, the original was built in the mid-1930s and it was a brick building, the same kind of brick as the school. And it had a uh, hip and gable roof. Uh, it was a pretty simple square building and then over time they added on to the back and the side. Um, and then in 1987 they tore most of that down and uh, constructed the, the field house that we know today, a really nice facility. The West Side Nut Club also generously paid for many other additions to the bowl. On May 6, 1958, funding for a new scoreboard and sound system were approved by members of the club. The second scoreboard, the same scoreboard used today, was installed in 1973. Over the years, weather in Evansville affected the bowl. The harsh winters and scorching summers of this region made it nearly impossible to keep the playing field in prime condition. However, 1974 brought a big change to the Wrights Bowl. With the installation of the prescription athletic turf system, this PAT system is an irrigation structure with plastic pipes which pump water to or from the field depending on weather conditions. The PAT system was put in in the early 1970s and it was state of the art. It was what uh, some of the Big Ten uh, football facilities had. Um, it would uh, allow them to water this, the turf uh, from underneath and also to, to pump water off of the field to take water away. It changed the playing surface. Before the PAT system was put in, it, it was a hard surface um, because of the clay mixture of the ground. But after the PAT system, it, it's almost entirely made of sand. And so the drainage is much better. Um, it's a much softer plain surface, and it, it's just a much nicer surface. At the same time, the cement grandstands were repaired and the wooden bleachers were replaced with fiberglass benches, which proved more comfortable for the spectators. During renovations in 1974, 
the track, which circled the playing field, actually cut into the end zone. Trying to have a full-size football field and a full-size track in a limited space just doesn't work. And the only way they could do it without having 90-degree uh, turns in the track was for it to cut through the football stadium, uh, through, the, through the actual playing surface. And so when you're running uh, down the sideline, when you got to about the seven or eight yard line, you were actually running on rubberized surface that was a part of the track. In 1995, new play clocks were added to each end of the field. A new high-tech sound system was donated for the bowl in 2003 by the West Side Nut Club. Even today, renovations continue to affect the stadium. Recently, plans were made to paint the entire stadium the school colors, blue and gray. Painting started in 2006, but was halted with the start of the season. These renovations are set to be finished in 2007. There have been countless memorable players and teams that have set foot in the bowl who will not soon be forgotten. Before an official tournament was created, the Wrights Bowl was home to eight mythical state championships, including the 1961 team who was never scored upon. They are considered to be one of the best teams in Indiana history and have contributed greatly to the tradition of the Wrights Bowl and regional high school football. With such a rich history, the Wrights Bowl quickly emerged as the representation of the west side of Evansville. Other events have taken place at the bowl as well, such as modern day football, the Refrigerator Bowl, a commencement for Wrights graduates, and University of Evansville football games when they had a team. Former head coach Bob Gaddis once said of the West Side, there may be bigger or more expensive stadiums in the country, but the tradition of the Wrights Bowl sets it apart from the rest. The unmistakable feeling that players and fans receive upon entering the bowl on game night is overwhelming. It's just a special place on Friday night. Um, we've been, I've been to a lot of high school stadiums. There's a lot of nice stadiums with aluminum bleachers that seat a lot of people, but I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a place with the character that the bowl has. It is only when you are there and take the time to stop and look around that you can truly appreciate the history and tradition that makes up this stadium.